Hello, uh, today we're going to talk about how to buy a luxury home in San Diego. I'm a real estate attorney and a broker. I, uh, I'm not claiming to be a super luxury home expert. I, as an attorney, I've done more work for people than actually as a realtor. I've helped people put together three pagers and agreements. It seems like Rancho Santa Fe people are frequently putting together deals, and uh, I've advised on some of those. I've helped people uh, sell homes um, that aren't on the market that exchange hands. Frequently, there's a lot of seller financing involved. Uh, somebody might have an up-and-coming company. They're not, uh, they, they don't have a lot of cash. They're, they're, the cash flow might not be great, but they have, they've locked in some, some stock options. The sellers understand that. They know each other frequently already, or they, and they put together deals that way. It's really fun. It's really interesting. And that will bring us to one of our points today. After you've determined the area you're buying, after you've done some of the other things, the tips we're going to talk about, um, you might want to look into the idea of off-market properties, pocket listings. I will discuss a few ways you can do that when we get to that section. So, um, why? I, I've already messed up, but we'll go. I should have had a better picture here, right? Like, okay, so like that, even that would have worked better. Um, so anyway, let's go to the first one. Um, that is uh, target a location or a type of property. Home, that should have been on the water. Let me switch that. Uh, on the water, I have this little thing on the side. I can't really see what it looks like before I turn it on or off. Uh, so I'll just turn it off for now. Um, okay, so I once lived in Florida. I, my, my parents lived in Del Mar. They've lived in La Jolla. I've lived um, at the beach. Um, I, and the oddest thing I ever saw was when uh, the three years, my wife and I had sold our home in Carlsbad. It doubled and went to Florida to be real estate investors. We got smushed. We had four houses as the market turned. And we had some offers and didn't take them right away. Um, but it was the weirdest thing because I was doing real estate then and it was kind of difficult for realtors there to use the internet because people up north or really from in the beginning it was it was from all over but in the end it was just certain areas as prices went up from up north and they didn't really know what they wanted to buy they were visiting an area and want to see luxury properties um, it was really weird like that middle luxury area uh, which I'm going to give advice for was different now high-end buyers another story We will cover that a little bit today. And we'll take it in even deeper in the next videos um, But I'd say like you should know ahead of time you should target your locations You should target whether you want properties with ocean views Whether you know you're exactly on the water for instance are you know the cash flow do you have the cash flow? Do you want to have the cash flow to maintain houses on the water where there's like salt water? Like San Diego, the houses on the water definitely have maintenance issues. Um, houses on the bluffs in San Diego uh, occasionally are known to fall down because the bluffs give way. So are you are you willing to, to pay for a structural engineer? Um, are you willing to investigate those areas? Are you willing to make sure that that bluff is upkeep? Are you going to be doing all the things it takes uh, to keep your home around? What are the risks? Um, so you need to learn, you need to gather all that information in. Um, and one of the ways you can do it is by working with experts. So let's just go through my thing, uh, my presentation in order now, because I already am getting far afield. So the first thing is you want to target a home. You want to do uh, the basic groundwork. For instance, if you're moving to San Diego and you don't know the area that well, but money is not your issue it's buying a really nice property um then the easy answers because there's reasons for the easy answers is are it's sort of like this um del mar la jolla if if um if you really want a beach feel and and want to spend a lot of money but you're most likely your house is not going to be very large but you want to be on that beach it's probably del mar or it may be del mar if, wow, those are generalizations. But this is, I, you know, I've lived in San Diego except for three years since 88. I used to play tennis all over. Um, I, my parents lived in these areas. So I'm, I'm just, these are generalizations that will, I'm sure will tick off the locals, right? If you're living there. Uh, but now, if you want that, like more of a town charm feel, don't, and, and you're most likely, well, you can live in La Jolla Shores. That's closer to Del Mar feel. It's hard to get in and out of. Uh, La Jolla Shores is awesome town feeling, but you're going to be dealing with 
tremendous, well, just like in Del Mar, tremendous traffic problems and congestion and parking issues on the weekend. It's got to be a spoiler for people that aren't willing to accept that. I mean, it's a town. I just, when I think of uh, La Jolla Shores, I think of the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club, was, which I used to play a lot of tennis at, and I tried to be a member. I was on the waiting list. This is a long time ago. This is before I was married. And then, like, three months before I finally got in, I decided to join uh, Loma Santa Fe. So that changed my whole focus. I went from wanting to be there uh, to wanting to be closer to uh, Loma Santa Fe, which is Solana Beach, right on the edge of Rancho Santa Fe. So you're sort of picking your lifestyle, too. Like, what a tremendous lifestyle if you're living down in La Jolla Shores and you like the ocean the surf isn't that great in La Jolla Shores, great beginner surf, but it, it's sort of like you get to see the waves and you decide, am I going to go over, am I, you know, am I going to just chill out and surf in front or a little north? Am I going to go, if it's a big wave day, am I going to go think about surfing over at Bird Rock or some of the other breaks in La Jolla? Um, uh, La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club, I, I think, is an integral part of that experience if you're that type of person um, walking around in the town with a crowd but enjoying the food. I mean, it, it's a lifestyle choice. You, 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 you're going to try to make the most of that little area. Or are you going to go up on the hill in La Jolla and have tremendous views and maybe uh, more focus on the, uh, um, the La Jolla Country Club and, and the golf? Um, and are you happy with your school choices? I mean, you can pay for private schools like, um, well, I, I, I'm not going to, we'll, we'll, we'll do that at other times. Or the, or, the, or the La Jolla High. I mean, I, I have had friends that uh, lived in North PB, and they choiced into La Jolla High, and I happen to see on Facebook now that there's, you know, they have some very good schools, Berkeley and now Yale, it looks like. Um, so, and that's out of La Jolla High, which is public, so obviously that place can get things done. Um, the dad was probably well-connected, though. A friend of mine went to school with him. Um, so, you know, you, you got to get a feel um, for what you like. Maybe you come down and visit. Maybe uh, I would suggest, yeah, you can talk to realtors, but make sure you maintain procuring costs. We're going to get control of that. We're going to get, because once you give that up, you've made mistakes. So uh, that's target location. Uh, Rancho Santa Fe. If you're thinking about horses, horse properties, R Rancho Santa Fe is an incredible town. The village is cool. It's not even that overpriced. I mean, the village is awesome just for, you know, eating and relaxing. Um, but again, in and out of Rancho Santa Fe, traffic, it's, it's really strange. It's, it's sad, really. Uh, there's a lot of traffic in these high-end areas in San Diego. Um, and, and, and you can avoid that. And, and let's say that you have $20 million to spend, but you're not happy with the size of the home you're looking at in Del Mar. Well, you might want to consider Encinitas, although you might have to worry about a bluff issue along Carlsbad and Encinitas, whereas Del Mar is usually closer to just being walked. Here, let me, let me just do something. Um, this is a copy of, and we'll, we'll go check out Zillow, but this is my uh, website, and I'm not saying you need to go here. Uh, maybe if you want to talk to me, you go here, but I, you can just go to, I got another URL I'm going to go to. But this is the most expensive home listed right now in um, Del Mar. Now, I happen to know people who work for this agent. Yeah, you know, they've they've been doing luxury homes for a long time. So, like one of my advice is, don't talk to the listing agent, don't talk to a buyer's agent, uh, unless you know what you're going to ask, because you don't want to go see the home and then have then surrender procuring cause and lose all your leverage in the deal. Um, so, you know, I, I don't have a problem calling up the agent, but don't go see the home until you're willing, until you've basically bargained your right to procuring cause and that buyer's agent commission, which could be tremendous. So anyway, this is a um, the most expensive home in Del Mar for sale right now, and it's only 5,800 square feet, right? $48 million, and it's 5,800 square feet. I mean, you see 20 million and 3,000 square feet. It's a beach house, right? Um, I think for 48 million, well, we'll check. Why don't we just check? That's nice, right? Let's just go. We'll come, we'll come back to the point being made. Let's go to uh, Rancho Santa Fe and see what size of home you get for $48 million in Rancho Santa Fe. Which is, in my opinion, well, that's Santa Fe. I always make that typo. Um, Rancho Santa Fe. I wonder if those people mistyped their own listing. That's why they showed up there. Um, $39 million. 
Okay, so you could buy, instead of that home right now, you could buy any house in Rancho Santa Fe. This house, haha, <laughs> look at this house. This reminds me of the Bob Hope home there, just remodeling out in um, in the desert area. In uh, um, no, I'm spacing. Uh, well, anyway, um, it's in the Covenant. I like that. I personally like it because I like the playing golf at the at the golf course in the Covenant. Um, and uh, this is a really. It, this is a lot like the Bob Hope home. Now I'm gonna. Ha I've done this to myself. I've I've got to look it up. Bob Hope property uh, in Southern no. Toluca Lake. No, that's not the one I'm talking about. Palm Springs. This is um. But okay, let's take that pictures on the inside just to see. Well, I I think that the inside of this place may have been inspired by Bob Hope's home and that they've had an architect come back in and fix up. Oh, did I just lose? Here we go. Luxury. No, nope, that's my website. Oh, I'm sorry. I did this to everyone. Where did it go? Let's go to uh, favoritrealestate.com and just take a look at um, search. I'm just going to Rancho Santa Fe again. Rancho Santa Fe, and we'll click on that second property. So now, Santa Fe. Now we got 24 million. Sorry. So, so let's see the size. So this is um, 30 million. They dropped it down to 24 million. It's 8,000. This one was. Um, 22,000. Okay, so now let's go back to the Del Mar property. And this is what I like to do for beach houses. Really, any of them, any house, but important here. Because I want to know if I'm right on the beach or I'm a little inland, right? And so let's click on it. And you can do this on any website. We'll, we'll, I'll do one on Zillow. I'll do them all. Yeah. So we've got this, and it's looking a lot like it's on the beach to me. But we can make sure of it, right, by just going on the map and zooming in. So here's the property. It does. I mean, for Del Mar, that's a very good size house, right? Um, you can see the neighbors. And you can see your steps from the water. And um, I want to go forward on my pictures. Okay, so here we go. Um, like, but already, like, I don't know how often you've been looking. Like, one of the things when you're looking at pictures, you want to know, okay, obviously a professional photographer, well lit. But most likely, these rooms are really small because I'm already thinking this was a wide angle lens. And in my opinion, as a photographer, as a, as a knowledgeable, aware of what photographers doing with a, with a pretty good camera, a pretty good setup, and I try to do this sometimes for for people because sometimes I don't like the post-processing. A lot of people do. If my clients want to post-process, I send it out because I can have it. someone take snap 50, 60 pictures for $150 and they go in, they just brighten it up with Photoshop or whatever it is and they look better. And if that's what people want, I'm like, I, I, I'm, I, don't ma I, I haven't mastered Photoshop. But if they want straight up pictures, I'm really good. Now, I'm telling you most likely, see how these angles are? When I see this, I immediately think, it's probably a pretty darn skinny room and they've used a wide angle lens. Now, I don't know that for a fact that this house doesn't have oddly shaped rooms, but this is one of the giveaways that you normally see. It already looks pretty small, so I think they're trying, trying to look big. So this is what happens. Again, another odd angle, but you're only getting a partial room. When I'm looking at luxury homes for the first time, if, if I'm only seeing part of the bed in a room, the room looks great, right? I love, I personally would love to live here. I wish I had the $48 million to spend. But I'm already suspect, suspect of the choices being made here. Um, I, I'm really, a, I, I'm a new, if I had a, okay. Let me just tell you straight up. 
I haven't dealt with $48 million properties. I've, I've dealt with multi-million dollar properties. And what you don't want to do is have the buyers come in there with a huge letdown. So if you're setting this place up to feel like it's big, roomy, and spacious, and you've got wide-angle lens photos making rooms look bigger than they really are, I think you've already set expectations incorrectly, in my opinion. Now, who made these choices? I don't know. Um, the photographer was skilled in that it's well lit. They took the time. They probably used some HDR to make the background look good. Um, but if someone made the choice, I believe to use wide angle lenses to make these smaller rooms look bigger. I don't know that that's a good idea. Um, I would, again, defer to the client. But, um, you know, these are great. Okay, so I'd love to live here. Let's just say that. I just think we should be t showing people what room, what size rooms the rooms really are. Um, and the reality is, when you're buying a home on the beach in Del Mar, you're, you're, getting, you're not usually getting a very big home, right? That's just reality. This home actually looks, it is big for a Del Mar home. Um, you know, they've done a good job marketing 120. That's good. Okay. So now here is, um, let's say you were interested in this home, just you could afford it. And you're like, this is one of the homes I'm putting in my basket. I want to compare the Del Mar to top properties in Del Mar to the top properties in Rancho Santa Fe, La Jolla. Maybe you're looking at Newport beach too. Um, you know, you're targeting your area. So, um, you could do a few things. Um, I would never spend 40, I would never spend 48 million, even if I thought I knew prices in Del Mar without getting multiple appraisers who appraise these kinds of properties right now. I learned just by coincidence. Well, no, because I attended some classes from uh, a top realtor about appraising homes in Florida and and it, it, you know and he, he basically was the guy that everyone went to if you were buying a home on Casey Key in Florida uh, the appraisers would consult with him because he had a market update he uh, constantly um, kept appraised of the prices that for 20 years he was the authority on pricing so when you're looking at your home you want to investigate pricing by talking to some experts now it could be realtors it could be other people you might have to pay them but I would get a feel for this. Now, if you've already got that feel, or if you're like, I, I realize I could be 40, so I'll offer him 40. I realize I could be 35, and I'll offer him 35. That's great. So then the next question becomes, do, normally a house like this, I, I don't think I'm supposed to share. What I would do is the next few things. I would go to the, my San Diego MLS. I'd click on the listing, and I'd find out how much the buyer's agent compensation is. Let's say it's 2%. Um, so that'd be 2%, let's call it 50 million. So, uh, 1% of 50 million would be, uh, 1% of hundred million would be 1% of 50 million would be 500,000, 2% would be a million dollar. It could be a million dollar commission for the buyer's agent. Um, I would like, you know, let me volunteer. If you're thinking about buying that home, let me work with you and I will bring in and pay the experts that you need to get this deal done. But that's not that was the greed in me, right? You got to understand. Million dollar commission. Wow. Um, let me uh, re let me rephrase this. That's really your money if you're the buyer. Okay. So then you've got to decide where you want to allocate that million dollars. If you would like to locate, uh, put a bunch of that in your pocket, what you could do is work with a realtor um, who would... Um, let you keep a good a good portion of, of that money if you thought you were skilled. And then the la the next thing would be just negotiating and get into the price that you want. Another easy way to do this, and we could do this anywhere in the, in the country really, is we could refer you to the listing agent, ask the lead listing agent to work with you just on this deal. I would have all sorts of qualifying for the course, uh, listing agent. I also pre-qualified you to make you look like a strong position you as the buyer that they want to work with. And then I'd say, would you do it 
if we, you know, and, and share three quarter of the real estate commission, and then I'd share that with you, the buyer's commission. So maybe 200 extra grand would stay with, maybe none. I mean, you know, okay, so that's really what we're gonna do. Let's look at how long homes like these might usually stay in the market. Let's see if we can actually figure that out using um, one of our tools. So let's go to Del Mar. Um, right? No, it didn't switch it. I'm I've been having trouble. Well, I know why. It's because I've got a bunch of things open. And um, this is Del Mar. This is some data. This is the first, the initial, we're going to drill down into the data. So price per square foot, average, median, that's since 2018, really hasn't done much. Went up a little bit in 17s, bouncing around. Now, we're probably not dealing with that many sales at any given time. We're looking at less than 20. So I, I, I don't think you can draw much from individual mood sales. I think you can say the prices have been bouncing around and probably really dependent on the particular homes. Okay, so percentage price. They, the homes are generally getting 92% on average of the list price, but 94% of the median. Um, so I would say as the houses go down in price, they clo they sell closer to the listing price. It's probably the way I'd interpret that. It's hard to do that when there's only a few examples of sales every month. And the sales price is, oh, we must have had a big sale. Okay, so... You know, if you're looking at 48 or 50 million, and the average price we're talking about because of this data is 3 million, um, it's not really all that relevant to you, is it? Um, now, we just saw that there's going to be not that many houses um, in Del Mar of any sort of square foot, but we're getting, um, let's see how many sold listings there are. We're looking at one of we're looking at one, one, there was two back in 2010, but we're looking at one. Each one, each time we pop in at 6,000 square foot more in Del Mar, we, each month it happens, we're looking at a price of one. So the price per square foot is going to bounce around. Probably very much depends on the home. Um, how many listings are there? There's between four and zero. Um, there are average market time. This should be huge to know. That is a lot of months. So, um, I mean, sorry. So we're looking at one, we're looking at five months. Close to six months. I'd like to know what was the percent of the original. Um, so most of these homes sell for less than their listing price. Um, whether it's average or median. The average price of square foot so right now, this is telling you, based on the number of the recent sales, there's not a lot of market time for these data. And for for on average, uh, this is sales compared to homes on the market. I think this is a much better average market time is much better when you deal with a small amount of data. That's the average. That's the median. But I, I'm saying that. Okay, for luxury homes, this is actually not a long market time. Um, considering there's also so few of them and i i think that's why i i think because there's so few homes for sale that are bigger than six thousand square feet in del mar um there's a reasonable amount of demand right um what was the average sale price again and and, and generally because there's only one going off at a time we're seeing that we're seeing six well almost seven i like to well no that's six we'll get around that on 21, 3, 22. We can go back. Let's go back 10 years. Um, so now you have an idea 
of what that particular market is if you're in it I think this is much more likely you're actually much more likely to be looking in here these areas and drilling down in a similar fashion to what I just did so that is so if you're okay so first you're mastering the financials right that 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 was um you're locating and the second tip I had was master your financials this is very important because you're going to be positioned as the type it's going to position you as the type of buyer you are are you a cash buyer are you a, a buyer who's already been yeah, there's different names for pre-approved or or uh, whatever your bank says are you going to get a letter from your banker that's believable saying you will get the money you need to buy this home um are you um looking for seller financing I, I you know I, as i said on some of these off market listings there has been seller financing do i think it would be hard to to do a little marketing in the area saying we've got a buyer well qualified low cash flow looking for seller financing um in the area and then i i would you know as the lawyer in me who understands um the rules uh, you know, we would make sure the law is current, but we'd say, look, if you provide seller financing, you have to foreclose, you'll just get the property back. So you're taking in five or 10 million or whatever, maybe it's a million or two, you're financing the rest. If the payments stop in X amount of months, you'll be able to foreclose. The foreclosure laws are pretty strong as long as you're playing it straight up as a seller. It might be an opportunity for you to get some cash flow of your own and sell out for a big chunk of change now. And if it doesn't work for the guy, you're, you or your family will get the property back. And you can set up transactions like that. I've seen it. Um, so you want to master your financials. You want to have the cash. You want a snapshot. You want to show it. You want to show your bank account, whatever it is. You want to, you know, your investment banker. Um, you know, if, if a guy from Goldman in the Silicon Valley office or uh, the merger, you know, if a guy from one of the big banks is saying you're qualified because they're giving you the money well, you don't even have to say because they're racket, wrapping up you know they're, they're giving you a collar on your options or whatever it is you know that's going to go a long way to, to the story of saying you can do this um so um not much more i i, I like talking but we're trying to get to the points now okay so now we're getting to now know the market this is the data that i'm talking about now I, this isn't everything right we're going to get to expert understanding soon now, you want to be aware of the MLS. Like we're, we'll talk about, I'll show what I do on Zillow. I just showed you a little bit of what I did on mine and you zoom in, you get the information, you know the area. Um, like I said, I love Del Mar, but it's, their homes are not going to be big. They're going to be much bigger, more luxury feeling in Rancho Santa Fe. Luxury, Rancho Santa Fe, most of Rancho Santa Fe feels like a really, it's like an enclave of relaxed wealth and happiness. That's the feel. It's pretty cool. If that's for you, you might want to check it out. La Jolla's got like micro pockets of different things. Del Mar's beachy or views of the beach near the village. Um, then there's luxury homes out here where I live in Poway. I used to live along the beach in Poway. Uh, uh, there's the wine area, awesome homes in there. And then golf course homes. So if you're looking for schools, you're looking for a little more room, Poway might be interesting. Um, there's some great homes between Poway and Rancho Santa Fe. It's Fairbanks Ranch. For us, ranch, the tremendous views over nice valleys, uh, ocean with lower prices and sometimes bigger homes as you go north from La Jolla all the way up to Oceanside. Um, golf course homes. Again, you got to be careful of golf course. I live across the stream of golf course. That golf course closed. So it kind of takes away some of the fun and probably the value. Um, okay, so um, seek out of pocket listings. So there are a lot of ways to communicate with agents. You might want to work with an agent who is willing to make a few phone calls, willing to go to some of the realtor meetings. Um, you know, it, it's not expensive to hit the area on Facebook and saying we're looking for homes not on the market. Uh, qualified buyer, tell a little bit about your story without identifying you too much. We do the same thing with postcards. Um, although, you know, with the postcards, yeah, like especially if you're, you know, I, if I were doing a postcard to Rancho Santa Fe and saying we're looking for an off-market home, a uh, very well-qualified buyer with particular interests, the, we're looking for this, um, I would say 
I, you know, people in, in the in the post office in Rancho Santa Fe, they have to go there. There's no postal delivery. So they stand right over the garbage bins and they go junk, 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 junk. So if you want to get through to a homeowner with mail in Rancho Santa Fe, and some people, some Rancho Santa Fe homes, they don't even live there, right? So now you also want to find a way to target the out, uh, the, out uh, the homeowners that don't live in the area. In fact, that might be the best way to target them. So many things to talk about. Um, but you have to make a very simple postcard, you know, probably with red letters or yellow letters and say, you know, uh, qualified buyer looking to buy your home or something. Yeah, even shorter. Um, now, this is the big one for me because we want help with experts. Um, like, let's say you call me up and say, John, I want to buy a home in the Bay Area. Okay, now I visited the Bay Area. I was up there recently because my son's looking at schools, but I have. Just like I have a very, I feel, I feel um, well, a strong understanding of the areas, but not the particular houses in many of those areas. I don't have a strong feeling for the areas in, um, you know, if you're looking in the Bay Area or Silicon Valley or something like that, if you're buying luxury homes up there, um, I could direct you to areas of Florida, like Naples, I love, um, and, and then the, you know, Palm Beaches. We could direct you to those areas, but what I would do is I would be calling. Um, well, we'll get into it. And there, there, there's um, there's there's referral services now that talk about big data. I that, that that's great, right? And if you can figure out which agents bought three or four homes in that area and you want to talk to them, great. There's much better ways to do it. Than just getting on the phone. You can get the broker data. You can see the sales. You can look at homes that sold and see who the listing agent was. You can ask them how many homes they've sold in the area. You can call the brokers, say who's your best person for this type of buyer, um, and, and vet the information. There's there's the traditional way that I've referred people out since I've been a real estate agent. Um, I, I, 2004 is when it started. I've referred out, you know, sometimes it was just family members in the beginning, but you refer out clients. Uh, during the short sale, uh, process because we were doing the negotiations. People called me first because they found me at my website, upside down real estate.com, which I still have, but it's not up. Um, I referred people out all over, and, and you get a feel for talking to the agents and your clients about who's going to work well with them. And that's really an important part of the process. So um, then the next question becomes should you work with the listing agent directly or should you work with the buyer's agent? That really depends on your knowledge of the area. Um, if you're, If you were to tell me, I like the idea of oceanfront homes. I don't mind the maintenance and the upkeep, uh, but I, I, I have these specific needs. But I also, like other areas around there as well, I would talk to you about talking to listing agents and say, look, we're just looking at you for oceanfront homes because you've sold five in there. And we were looking and, and we talked to them about what you wanted and that they're willing to perform. And by the way, can you give us a referral fee? Because your commission is going to be a million dollars or 500000 and we're looking to share some of that. So a little of that would go to me and some of that would go to you, help you put in floors, whatever you want to do. Um, so we go buyer's agent area by area. Or if we felt like there was competition, uh, buyer competition, or there were other reasons to go with the list agent, and there are because we'll talk to them, or you're confident you know the area and you're like, I want this home, I want it at that price. Well, then we can probably work with the listing agents directly. Um, and you could just have me oversee the transaction. We can refer you out to the buyer, to the listing agent. So the listing agent will do all the work and I'll be there to bounce ideas off, review the paperwork, talk to you about inspections, what to do, what, what your inspector finds. Um, we've got many ways to do it. So you can go to winnerscheck.com luxury. You'll see this video for now, but I'll turn it into a video series over time and there'll be a link there. Um, to um, set up a free strategy session with me where we find out your goals. Um, I am most likely going to vet your financials. I don't have to read them, but have you prepared them? Do you have a snapshot um, of your financials? If not, like I'm before uh, I invest a, a lot of time in it, because I'm going to be, unless you're buying in Poway or a home, an area I know and I can tell you, oh yeah, I'm comfortable between you and I, we're, we're ready to do this. I'm going to be referring you out. 
and seeking a referral fee and then working with you as your advisor the way many people do it i you know this is what happens when luxury you might know this already if you talk to your friends who bought luxury homes they frequently want to work with the best people in the area and they have they have their like an in-between advisor making sure all the stuff gets taken care of that's i'm looking to be that guy um or gal uh to make sure that everything's done right on the up and up you're getting great advice we bring in the experts in i like the expert reports what you're being told by your agent is good and I'm willing to do that for a share of the referral fee, which I will share with you. That's really the business model I'm seeking. But to do that well, I need to position you as a buyer that they want to work with. So I'm going to want to help position you as someone who's ready to do this. If you're a guy who needs a gal or a gal who needs seller financing, we can do that too. But we're not going to be working, most likely we're not going to be working with buyer's agents. We're going to be talking about listing agents directly. And we're going to see if their sellers are the type of people, they're business people, right? That's who we're looking for, business people kind of sellers who, who um, understand why uh, they might be able to take some of their market time worries and maybe even their pricing worries off because they're going to do some seller financing. And then we're going to talk. Then we're going to develop your story of why you're the guy, or the gal, or the family that they want to work with. So, um, winnerscheck.com forward slash luxury. Um, see more of the vi these videos there. I'll probably put a link there, but right now it'll be to set up a free strategy session. Soon it will be both. Thank you. Talk to you later.